and gold of the victors. We are the men of the UBC. All are the men that know just masters. We are strong in adversity. The defining moment in the life of our early students at UBC was the great trek of 1922, a pilgrimage from the old Fairview shacks on the grounds of the Vancouver General Hospital to our present site in West Point Gray. The great trek was a starting point, the focus and the identity for a new university spirit. The journey of hundreds of students through the streets of Vancouver signaled the determination for responsible leadership, academic freedom, the pursuit of learning. Today, the great trek has grown into a symbol for the discipline and the dedication to our common good, to which we all must hold fast as we face new frontiers and a new rena renaissance in the amazing world unfolding at our doorstep. The following excerpts are a collection of early UBC memories from you, some survivors of the original Great Trekkers. Each story brings to life some of the most colorful moments in their journey, and now an integral part of our heritage. The spirit of adventure shown in the Great Trek lives on, as October has been designated and proclaimed Great Trek Month to celebrate the memories of the past and preserve the glowing heritage of our university. All hail to the keepers of our heritage, the Great Trekkers of 22. When the um, Great Trekkers came in, they came in about 1924. And the reason that they um, were so important was that in those days, as always, the government was hard up and didn't have enough money for, for uh, to establish a, uh, a, a, a university. And so the students and the professors thought they would try and bring some pressure to bear on the government. Now, have you heard about this before? Well, <clears throat> they thought they made representations to Victoria and the government turned them down. And so they thought, well, let's make something where we can get some public input. And so they decided to do the march from where the university was being held at that time. The university was being held in the Fairview Shacks. That was down near King Edward High School, which would be right close to the corner of Oak Street and 12th Avenue. Well, the university at that time it was made up of maybe 12 to 1300 students. They organized this trek, that's the students and the professors, and they walked from the Fairview shacks out to West Point Gray. And I would gather that by that time, the government had dedicated that property for the university. And each person took a stone with them. And so when they got to the, to the West Point Gray campus location, they deposited their stone, and it was eventually going to be used to build a cairn to celebrate the occasion. Well, it was amazing. Amazing how the idea of the Great Trek caught fire, and people began to talk about a university, and began to feel that a university was really needed and so people in the uh, editorialists in the paper wrote editorials and very very quickly the idea of building a university for british columbia caught fire the idea caught fire and it wasn't too long before the government was just driven into establishing funds for a university and that basically was the great trek. What happened once you got out there to the uh, Point Grey site? Oh, well, we, we went, the science building was just a skeleton at that time. And we all went up to the top, and I have pictures of it. And I know where I am right there. Oh, do you? Oh, yeah. that'd be neat to see. Yeah. Did you get down and form the UBC letters then? Were you one of those that formed the letters oh, of I UBC on know. the field? No. Some of them did. I don't remember. 
Do you remember picking up stones along the way for the cairn? Mm -hmm. Did you pick up stones along the way for the cairn? No, they were mostly right around there for the right around the building. There were lots of was all rough stone work anyway. And uh, they were put in there for the cairn. Hmm. Do you remember do you remember the day of the great trek? And everybody went up there and they all did what they did and then everybody went home. But what did did people go to to parties afterwards or did they have social engagements they afterwards? They were too tired. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, it was a long walk. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. As I say, most of them, I don't think in the city they walked. But from the gates in into the university, that was all walk. So what did, you were involved in getting the petitions, were you not? Oh, yes. Tell us about that. Oh, everybody did that. Everybody had a, somebody, I don't know who the organizers were, but they were wonderful. And everybody had something somebody and they knew where people lived and then you took the people around their block and then the ones that lived up in the country they had them in their little towns and they all got uh, went there and saw them hmm. another thing that i did uh after you finish grad after you graduate you had don't belong to anything and I couldn't stand that, so I got together. We got all the graduate students. We had a grad club, and there were people from the German. There was a girl from the German uh, department, and some from the science, some from agriculture. All we all got together. And that was fun. <laughs> and Fox was down there, and there was quite a large open space down there. And, uh, can you can you tell us a, a, a little bit about um, uh, building up to the to the great trek and your involvement in that? Oh, I I was uh, but we were dragged into this and through getting the figures from the people all over the province. Mm -hmm. So after. Uh, the first year, we were all prepared. So, did you have? Did, did you? Um, did you go get some of the signatures yourself? Were you involved? Yes. In that? Yeah. We had a contest. <laughs> can you? Can you? Um, can you tell us about the the, the great trek? The day of the great trek. Do you remember yes. that? What you? Absolutely. I was right in everything. So the great trek was organized. To begin with, we had the senior councilmen, and uh, I, I should have brought that book out, the yearbook. And uh, be very important that you get those names if you go. Yeah, we have we have that yearbook. You yeah. have we all do that. It, yeah. So anyway, uh, they they went to Victoria, and uh, persuaded the government that if they the, the government, uh, if they got enough signatures to show that the legislature is signed by the people, they want the university, then we'll, we'll do it. Hmm. Yeah, hmm. and I remember vividly one time going into the science place where they were doing it, and there was quite a, um, you could smell the, the the, the different odors from the what they were doing in the scientist things. So I walked out and probably faded on the grass. <laughs> I can still remember that. I was so mad at myself to think that I that I had to be picked up. It's interesting that your father named the Sylvia Hotel after you. That's a beautiful building. And yes. Nice. When I think of that, he he must have been very very far sighted because there was nothing. I've got a picture of that building on the corner with nothing around there. Mm. No, the, that building has got too many sad memories for me. Oh, does it? Why? Yeah, why? Because when the Depression came and people people um, uh, doubled up, the place was nearly empty. And my father, I guess, I don't know about him, I, I don't remember him saying anything like that, but he must, he must have had trouble paying for the mortgage and he lost it. Oh. Mm.
Oh, that's too bad. So he didn't build another one for my brother and name it for my brother and my sister. <laughs> can, you, can you tell us the story about how the great, your involvement in the, the, the march up to UBC? Well, um, not very much. I, you know, they, I love the, the parades and things that these people put on. I remember the, you know, the sardines packed in <laughs> Fairview and all this sort of thing. But we were asked to collect names, and my area was out in the, all that lower part of Shaughnessy with all these great houses, and I was supposed to go and get people to sign up for these things, and I was so nervous, I went to the back door in each case and <laughs> got their signatures, <laughs> which was quite funny. Often met by a Chinese cook who wondered what I was doing there. <laughs> it was fun. But I didn't really have much to do with the other than to go out and sit in the skeleton of the building and so on, because uh, I just sort of followed the rest of people. I, didn't, I wasn't a leader in any way. But you did the walk. Oh, yes, did the walk and threw a stone into the cairn. And Where did you walk from? Well, I don't know. I think it must have been, well, as you said, around Sassman or somewhere, I think. I can't remember. We took um, Took the streetcars. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I was uh, living with my grandparents in Kitsilano at the time, and so uh, I took a streetcar out to as far as it would go. Mm. But it seems to me that in those days there was some wooden planking out there on some of the sidewalks, you know. That oh, there wasn't. There were not concrete sidewalks. No, I think that they had old wooden ones, if I remember, in places. Oh yes, Freddie Wood. Yes, he <laughs> was. I got in his bad books very early on because. Uh, sort of smart aleck, I suppose, but we had this huge room with about 150 people in or something, and he wanted us to, to get descriptive words and the sound of a door slamming, how would you describe that, and so on, and all these things, and you know, we and then one had this pulling your foot out of thick mud, and everybody looked sort of stunned, and I muttered to the person behind me the sound of a kiss like this, and she laughed, and I laughed, and out of all that building, he saw this, and this finger wagged like that. You, you, you know, this is me. Uh, what was it that you said? What was your explanation? Because I, I couldn't think of anything else, and I gulped and gulped. What did you say? And I said, like a kiss. And of course, roars of laughter from the whole class. And then he looked as though someone had put a fish under his nose, and he said, could perhaps, could now, could we have one less sentimental <laughs> reply? <laughs> Oh, I was so humiliated. So you remember climbing up to sit on the shell of the chemistry building? Oh, yes. How did that come about? I don't know. You see, the way that the building had was started, it was supposed to be built. And then the war came along. And of course, they shut everything down. So it was just left that way. So somebody had the bright idea, I guess, that we should go and pose on the building. But um, they were all very enthusiastic, the, uh, the members. And, and as I say, they were... Uh, old people like Art Lord and, and um, Blythe Eagles and all these people that were, you know, really had good organization ability. Oh, they were the organizers. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. How did you get up there? I don't remember. Uh -huh. <laughs> I have no idea. Probably, no, you know, youth knows no fear. We went to the land, gold of the big.